And everybody knows the Pistons were awful last year um, under Monty Williams. He was 14 and 68 with the Detroit Pistons. Amongst one of the worst performances in an NBA season ever. It was garbage. Bad. Terrible. However, whatever word you want to use to describe a terrible season, that's what Monty Williams was. But people kind of got to give him a little bit of slack here because Monty, he did have something going on. His partner, she was dealing, I believe it was cancer or she was dealing with some sort of illness all through the course of the season. And it's tough for someone to be fully invested when you have a family crisis like that going on. I mean, it's tough. So I try to give him leeway, but also it's like, bro, you, you in a hot seat a little bit because... 14 and 68 is just ridiculous. It should never get to a point where it's that bad. But I, I'm also a firm believer that coaches, they take time to develop. You need to let your coaches get a, a genuine relationship with the players on the team, with this front office, with the staff and all of that. But the interesting thing here about Frank Vincent is him being hired in as an assistant coach here with the Pistons is you almost give someone another shot to be 110 percent invested in what the Pistons got going on. Because if the head coach isn't invested in terms of he's got got other stuff going on with family and all of that stuff, you need someone else who's going to give 110 percent. You need everybody else on the coaching staff to give 110%. Frank Vincent, known as the shot doctor, helped Lonzo Ball fix his shot. Brandon Ingram, Herb Jones, um, Najee Marshall, Jose Alvarado, all of these different guys who played on the Pelicans increased their shooting percentage by a large margin. Almost 10%. Herb Jones went from 33% to 42% in a single season of shooting a three-pointer. So that tells me, yeah, the shot doctor might be on to something. Lazo Ball, 32% all the way to 38%. Crazy. Jose Alvarado, 29% to 38% in a single season. These are tremendous jumps. And for a team that has a lot of athleticism like the Detroit Pistons, we're going to need some guys who can shoot the ball because we know we can get to the cup. K can get to the cup. Ivy can get to the cup. Thompson can get to the cup. We got some athletes on the team. It just so happens that they can't shoot the damn ball. So a shooting guru like this, I approve. I'm content with this. The only thing now is the Pistons got to make the correct decision come draft night. So draft is coming up on the 26th of June. And, you know, there's been some speculation of, oh, they should draft this guy. They should draft this guy. Draft this guy. To hell with drafting anybody if you're a Detroit Piston. If you're in the front office, to hell with drafting anybody. We need to trade that fifth pick because that fifth pick isn't going to do us any justice. That fifth pick is going to do us nothing. How can that help us if we're drafting another young guy when we're trying to elevate out of the little kid zone? If we're trying to move over to the grown-up table, we don't need to invite more kids to the little kid's table. We need guys who can shoot, whether that's free agents or whether we make some trades. And out of the rookie class that's there right now, these guys aren't that good. Bronny James is being talked about the most, and that's a damn shame because Bronny didn't really do anything on the collegiate level. Zach Eady is one of the most popular players in the draft right now, one of the guys who are deemed elite in the draft. And Zach Eady isn't an animal like that. He was good at Purdue. He got to the line. He drew some foul calls. But let's be real, bro. Zach Eady not going to the league dominating in his first three years. It's just not going to happen. At best, he's going to be a Zaza Pachulia. He's going to be a Igalski. It's at best, bro. And this is the reality of it because he doesn't have the best footwork right now. He's not an animal. Like people are proclaiming him to be like he was in Purdue. But he was really just taller than everybody. So Pistons got to trade that fifth pick. Let that go. And some of the free agents we should target, ideal free agents in my mind that I've kind of put together is you, you got DeAndre Hunter over in Atlanta. He's not really a free agent, but he's over in Atlanta. And I think we should try and get him because Atlanta is kind of dysfunctional right now. They got a lot of different things going on um, in their organization of trying to trade Trey Young and possibly keeping the first pick, trading the first pick. They're figuring some things out. So they might be trying to shift guys around and we need to put together some sort of package Give them the fifth pick also. And let's bring DeAndre Hunter there because he shot just under 40% in his past season. And I can accept that. That, to me, a guy who can play 3 and D, I'll take it all day. 
Another dude who actually is a free agent, Malik Beasley. We need to make a run for Malik Beasley if we're the Detroit Pistons because Malik Beasley shot 44% from the three-point line. He can play defense, and he can get to the cup. But above all, we need some guys to help Kay Cunningham and Ivy and Durant spread the floor because as of right now, everybody can go besides Kay. Everybody, everybody get the boot. Get them up out of Detroit. If that's the, if their name is not Kay Cunningham or even Jalen Duran, get them up out of Detroit because those are the only two guys who showed some sort of progression. I like to see progression throughout the season. And I have not seen it. Miles Bridges is another guy I would take out of free agency. Don't pay him too much. Let him know we want him to stay here, but tell him he's got to show us something first. Paul George, hell no. Hell no. Pistons should not be trying to get Paul George. And I'm going to tell you why we should not be trying to get Paul George, because this is a Pistons special. How many players have we got when they've been past their peak over the years? In the past few decades, we have loved doing this. We love bringing in guys when they're way past that peak of their career. Blake Griffin was the latest victim of that. Um, we had Tracy McGrady. Allen Iverson, Josh Smith, Chris Webber. The list goes on and on of bringing guys in after they've passed their peak. And Paul George would be, would be another guy who's just collecting that bank from a, a poor organization or, or an organization who really doesn't know what they're doing. So we don't need to bring Paul George over there. And I doubt he would even want to come. But anybody throwing those jokes out there, throwing those rumors of bringing Paul George, nonsense, nonsense. Don't do that. Get Derrick Jones Jr., if anything. He was kind of broke in the finals. <laughs> but let's be honest. He's a he's a solid 3 and D wing guy. I mean, I, I would take that to help spread the floor with Kay Cunningham. Don't bring Tobias Harris. Don't don't go get no. Don't don't do that. We don't want Tobias Harris. So um above all, man, Pistons gotta make something happen. There's plenty of options out there for us, but we we need shooters that can help Kay Cunningham. Because right now he's the only one that's doing all the scoring for the Pistons. We have no other help on the scoring end besides Kay Cunningham. So we got to get some shooters. Help spread the floor. We know guys can get to the bucket, but when teams clog the paint, what do we do next? We can't shoot. <laughs> so, so we're screwed. That's how you end up losing all these games, and that's how you end up going 14-68 and 68 for a single season, which is awful.